Hi, welcome to the channel NCRT Math Tutor. In this video, we are going to learn Class 12 Mathematics Chapter 5 Continuity and Differentiability. In this video, let us understand what is differentiability. First, to understand the differentiability, let us take a real function. So, what is a real function? A real function means the domain and range of the function is a real number. For example, y is equal to fx. This is a function. Here, x is the input value and y is the output value. x is a domain and y is a range. So, if x and y both are in real number form, then we call such function as a real function. So, here I am taking a real function f and one point from the domain of this function and that point I am naming as c. Then the derivative of the function f at point c we can define like this way. f dash c is equal to limit x tends to c fx minus fc divided by x minus c provided this limit exists. So this has to satisfy. This limit exists means left hand side limit must be is equal to right hand side limit. Then only we can find the derivative of the function. So what is left hand side limit? What is right hand side limit? See about that I have already discussed in class 11 limits and derivative chapter. So, if you have any doubt regarding limit concept, I have given the link in the description box. So, please refer that. So, here limit exists. In this case, limit exists means left hand side derivative must be is equal to right hand side derivative. Because here we are talking about differentiability concept. So, if left hand side derivative is equal to right hand side derivative, then we can say the function is differentiable at point C. So, let us see what is left hand side derivative. See here left hand derivative or left hand side derivative is nothing but in this case we have limit x tends to C minus fx minus fc divided by x minus c. So, while applying the limit, we have to write like this way, limit x tends to 0, wherever you have x, that you need to replace with the value c minus h, the domain point minus h. Then, here we have x, so that you need to replace with the value c minus h. So, then we get limit x tends to 0, f of c minus h minus fc divided by h. So, this is left hand derivative. Next here let us see what is right hand derivative. See for the right hand derivative, here we use minus sign for this, here we use plus sign. Then fx minus fc divided by x minus c. For the right hand derivative, in the place of x you have to put c plus h or the domain point plus h. So, c plus h. So, here we get after cancelling this, here we get limit x tends to 0, f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h. See in this case we have a minus sign, here you will get minus uh, h. So now, see you can observe here, suppose while applying the limit, after applying the limit here, you get some answer. So if this answer and this answer, both of these values are equal, then we can say the given function is differentiable. Suppose if this value is not equal to this after applying the limit, then we can say the function is not differentiable. So based on that, we can decide the differentiability of the function that is based on left hand derivative and right hand derivative value. And the process of finding the derivative of the function is known as a differentiation. And differentiation, the derivative of any function or f, if I take the function f, at some point c, I can write as f dash c or d by dx of fx then at the point c. Like this way, I can denote the derivative of the function f at c. Now here we have discussed that to call whether the function is differentiable or not, left hand derivative must be is equal to right hand derivative. 
let us see i am taking here one example based on that we will understand the differentiability concept related to function see i have taken a function fx is equal to mod x minus 1 where x is a real number and at x is equal to 1 so now here we have to check whether this function is differentiable at point x is equal to 1 or not that we have to check as I told you before, to check the differentiability, we need to find here left hand derivative and right hand derivative. So first, before finding that, let us find the value of the function at x is equal to 1. So at x is equal to 1, if I put x is equal to 1 in this function, I get f of 1 is equal to mod 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, that is mod 0 is 0. So this is the value of the function at the point x is equal to 1. Next let us find the left hand derivative. See for the left hand derivative just now we have discussed the formula. In the derivative formula we have to make the slight changes wherever we have x there we have to put c minus h. C is the domain point. So now let us use this formula same formula I am using but in our example now c is nothing but 1. We are checking the function at x is equal to 1. So c is 1. That means limit x tends to 1 minus fx minus f1 divided by x minus 1. Then wherever you have x that you have to replace with 1 minus h. Here we have c minus h. So in your example you have to replace that with 1 minus h. So the same changes I have done wherever we have c that I replaced with 1. So limit x tends to 1 minus fx minus f1 divided by x minus 1 is equal to limit s tends to 0. Here x you need to replace as c minus h. c is 1 here so 1 minus h minus f1 divided by 1 minus h minus 1. So 1 minus h f of 1 minus h. So here this now act as x value. So for f of f of x we have x minus 1 now x is 1 minus h that means this we can write as 1 minus h minus 1 so 1 minus h minus 1 minus 0 divided by minus h so if i apply the limit here here we get uh, minus h mod minus h is nothing but h only h divided by minus h so here we get minus 1 similarly right hand derivative see right hand derivative we have this formula here also wherever you have the point c that you have to replace with c plus h in this case the point c is 1 so right hand derivative limit x tends to 1 plus fx minus f1 divided by x minus 1 so limit x tends to 0 this x you need to replace with 1 plus h minus f1 divided by 1 plus h minus 1 so now x is now here 1 plus h so apply this uh, function 1 plus h x is 1 plus h so 1 plus h minus 1 so here we get limit h tends to 0 1 plus h minus 1 then f of 1 f of 1 value 0 minus 0 divided by h so here we get h by h that is 1 so you can observe here left hand derivative value is not equal to right hand derivative value that means we can say now the function is not differentiable this function mod function x minus 1 is not differentiable at this point so like this way based on that formula limit x tends to c fx minus c divided by sorry f of, f of x minus f of c divided by x minus c using this formula we can find the derivative of the function and the derivative we can find only if the limit exists that is the left hand side limit is equal to right hand side limit then only we can find the derivative of the function so this is about the differentiability of the function and related to this differentiability there is one theorem the theorem 3 is given in the textbook if a function f is differentiable at a point c then it is also continuous at that point so this is the theorem so now just we have discussed that the derivative of the function or the function is differentiable means for that we can use this formula that is f dash c is equal to limit x tends to c fx minus f of c divided by x minus c. So in the theorem they have given if the function is differentiable. So if the function is differentiable means now 
I am writing this formula as that is given in the theorem. Next here let us take the value f of x minus f of c. So this value I am taking now f of x minus f of c because we have to prove here the function is continuous. To prove the function continuity we have to show that the value of the function at point c is equal to the limit of the function that we have to see here. That means we need the value of f of x as well as here we need the value of f of c. This is the value of the function at point c and if I apply the limit here this forms the value of the function with respect to the given limit. So that's why I am taking here fx minus fc. Now let us write this in this form. That is nothing but fx minus fc only. See I am multiplying and dividing x minus c here. Where here there is a condition x is not equal to c. See suppose if x is equal to c then this becomes c minus c that is 0. So this is undefined. Something divided by 0 is undefined. So that's why this condition is given x is not equal to c. Now to this let us apply the limit. Limit x tends to c fx minus fc is equal to limit x tends to c. So apply the limit to this. So here see you can apply the algebra of limit concept. If there are like two functions or so three functions and if you are applying the limit to that then we can write that. Uh, by dividing like limit x tends to c fx minus limit x tends to c fc. Similarly this also you can write like this way apply the limit to this this is nothing but the multiplication of limits and then apply the limit to this. So we have limit x tends to c fx minus fc divided by x minus c into limit x tends to c x minus c. Next here we have this value right as it is and this entire thing is nothing but we have the formula just now we have introduced the formula that is for the derivative that is differentiability f dash c is nothing but this one. So here we have the same value that means this entire thing is equal to f dash c so that I am writing here f dash c. Then limit x tends to c x minus c. See if I apply the limit here x is tending to c that means c minus c is nothing but 0. So here you get the answer 0. Then we have here limit x tends to c fx minus limit x tends to c fc is equal to something that is f dash c into 0 is nothing but 0 only. Then there is no change on the left hand side here. Next I am taking this to right hand side so we have limit x tends to c fx is equal to limit x tends to c fc. Next here if I apply the limit li limit value that is, is tending to c so here we get the value as fc so limit x tends to c fx is equal to fc. So here this is nothing but the value of the function at point c and this is nothing but the value of the function with respect to the given limit. So both of these are equal that means now we can say the function is continuous at x is equal to c. So this is about the differentiability concept. If you like this video please like and subscribe. Also click the bell icon to get regular notification. Thanks for watching.